Before we get into our training video, if by chance you found this video as a recommended video on YouTube, this training video is actually part of an extensive Corel Draw for Beginners training series from AdvancedTShirts.com. We have developed dozens of videos and we also have available on our website downloadable work along files that you can work with in Corel Draw while you're working through the training videos. Easily the best and fastest way to learn. If these videos are helpful to you, please take a second to add a like to the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when we upload new video content. And of course, in the comment section below, you can post your questions or your Corel Draw video tutorial requests. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Ellipse tool, another dynamic and interactive shape tool and shape in Corel Draw. The tool is used to draw ellipses, perfect circles, pies, and arcs. Here in my workspace, you can see that I have an ellipse selected. And you can see that we have the ellipse property bar here at the top of the workspace in Corel Draw. Now these are the three states up here in the property bar. You'll notice if I select this pie, it will change to the pi state. The same for the arc. It'll change to the arc state. So we can draw ellipses, perfect circles, pies, and arcs with this tool in a dynamic and interactive way. I'll scroll down and we'll take a look at some of the things that we can do with the ellipse tool, which we'll find right here beneath the rectangle tool. Left click to select the ellipse tool. Your cursor will change to that tool. To create a basic ellipse, left click, hold down, and drag. You will have created a vector object. This is a shape object. It's different than a curve object. It is a shape object, and we covered that earlier in the training series, what the different types of shapes are relating to vector in Corel Draw. So that's a basic ellipse. If I want to create a perfect circle, I hold down control on my keyboard and pull and that will constrain the ellipse tool into a perfect circle. I can also hold down shift and control and create a perfect circle from the center. Like the rectangle tool, the ellipse tool is also similar in that if I want to select this ellipse, as long as I click on the line, I can select that. As long as I go to the center point, you'll see the cursor change to the move mode. I can left click, hold down, and move the ellipse. I can also, from the center point, left click to go from the scale and stretch mode to the rotate and skew mode for the object. Left click, and I'll change that mode. Click again, and I'll go back. So we don't have to go to the pick tool all the time when we're working with the ellipse tool. Now if I go to the pie mode, and I'm going to give this an outline of three points. And I'll go to the pie mode. Now it will change. The default is 270 and 0 degrees. These are the starting and ending angles for the pie. I can hover over the nodes in the ellipse, and there's two of them here for this one. And I can change the shape of the pie. I could make that half of a circle. Now it's going to go over to the arc mode, but I can click and change that back to a pie and have basically half of a circle. I can left click, hold down, and drag this down here and you'll see that sometimes when you're making these adjustments in the pie mode and the arc mode it might switch to the arc mode but if you want to go back to the pie mode you can just come up to the properties bar and click on the pie icon so that's the fundamentals of the ellipse tool and how we can work with it here I have a very basic vector object once again we're working through training for beginners or so working with basic things but these are all things that you can apply to larger tracing and drawing projects. I want to select this here and we're going to delete all of that. And You can see here what I've done is I've used 
objects, I've got the rectangle tool and the ellipse tool, and I'm tracing this light bulb icon. And I get a very clean, nice trace without trying to do that with the Bezier tool or the pen tool. So how I would go about that is I'll go ahead and left click, hold down, drag the bitmap up here, release that, and I'll create one next to that. Then I'll right click and I'll lock that object. I'll zoom in and I'll start with my rectangle tool. And I'll come right in here, pushing forward on my center mouse button or wheel, and we'll bring this over here. And then we'll interactively bring those corners to where they should be. Right click to make that red so I can see that. Then I'll go to the ellipse tool. I can see this is a perfect circle. I'm going to go from the center, so I'll hold down shift and control and get to the size that I think that ellipse is. And that's right about there. I'll bring this down here. Right click and change that to a red. So there's the bottom of the light bulb icon. Then I'll come up here into the top area, right about where I think the center is, left click and start creating an ellipse that I think would be just about the exact size of the light bulb icon. I'll right click and change the outline to red from the color palette. And as I'm looking at this, I think I probably want to move it over a little bit. So we'll bring it over here and bring it up there a little bit. Scroll up a bit here so we can see, and that looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the rectangle tool again. Zoom in, pushing forward on the center mouse wheel. Pull this up into there so it's inside of the ellipse. Then I'll come here and rotate the corners. Set to round, of course. Right click and change that to a red so I have some contrast to work with. I'll hold down shift, select both objects, hit the C key to center them. And then I can move these over just a little bit so that they're in position. Now with these two objects, what I'll do, since they're selected, you'll notice that even though I have two objects selected, I don't have the multiple objects properties bar. I'll need to go to the pick tool for that. Now I have the multiple objects property bar. I can weld these. Now, with these welded, I now have a curve. They are no longer in the shape state. Double click and change to the shape tool. I'll drop a node here on this line with a double click from the shape tool. I'll come over here and do the same thing. Double click and put a node there. I'll zoom in. I'm most likely going to want a node here, double click, and a node here. Now, these two nodes I'll then lasso, select, and delete. Now, there's my curve being set up. I'm going to take this control arm and pull down until my line is set. Now, I'm going to hold down control to constrain that control arm because I don't want it moving around. So I'm holding control, pulling that control arm down, and there I have that side of the icon. I'll do the same here, holding down control, pulling this control arm down, and now I have the shape of the light bulb. I'll zoom into these little, I guess you could say light ray type objects, go back to the rectangle tool, left click, hold down, Pull that out right to the edges, and then I'll go to the corner and bring that all the way in. I'm going to fill that with a red, and then right-click to take the outline off of it, and it's a perfect match for that object. Then I'll take that, left-click, hold down, right-click one time to duplicate, holding down control to constrain it and bring it right over here to that object or on top of that light ray on the bitmap that I'm tracing. I'll zoom in and make sure that that's in the correct position and it is. 
using my center mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. I'll hold down shift with these objects and then I'll weld them. Then I'll click to change to the rotate and skew mode and I'll start rotating this right click one time holding down control to constrain that and you can see I've duplicated it in the exact position I wanted to. I'll do that one more time here right click right there and then a final time right click to duplicate and right there. Now down here I'm not going to want this one at the bottom so I'll just get my shape tool lasso the nodes and that will lasso and select the nodes and then hit the delete key. Now I can take this shape which is the rectangle the circle here this shapes that I've created for the light rays and the light ball and weld them. Now I have everything except for the highlight here in the upper left cleanly and easily traced to vector. So I'm going from a bitmap object to a vector object using the shape tools in Corel Draw. And very often when I approach a tracing project for production artwork, I automatically start thinking about shapes. What shapes are in here? And what can I use in the shape tools to trace this accurately and easily without having to use the Bezier tool or the pen tool? Now at this point, I'll go create an ellipse for the highlight. I think the center for that would be right about here, so I'll hold down Shift and Control and start to create the ellipse for the highlight. And I think that would go right about there. I'll come over here and right click on a red so I can see that outline against the black and I'll move that into position. Then I'm going to left click, hold down right click one time and recreate or duplicate this ellipse. I'll go to the scale handle and start scaling that out. Go to the center point, move that into position. Now that that's in place, I'll hold down shift, click on the line of the other ellipse, and you can see I have them both selected, but I don't have my multiple objects properties bar. So I'll hit the space bar on my keyboard, and I'll go to the pick tool, and that will bring up the multiple objects properties bar. I'll come here to back minus front, and very easily have created that highlight object and deleted the other ellipse which I would not need for the vector artwork. At this point I've completed the trace and I know I have a locked bitmap here but if I left click nothing will happen. So I'll right click and go to unlock object. Now I have that bitmap and I can pull that out of the way. I can delete that now. Come here to the light bulb itself fill that with black, take the outline off of it. I can see I missed a few of the objects here. So what I want to do is I'll take these two, hold down shift, actually that's one with two parts, and then this, and then the light bulb, and now I'll weld, and I'll have the black. I'll go to the highlight, select that, left click, fill that with a white, right click, take the outline off and I will have completed the vector trace of the light bulb icon working entirely with shape tools in Corel Draw. Zoom out and we have another practice down here. And you can see what I did here is, and I zoomed in a little too far there, we'll go right here. First I just created all of these ellipses to create the cloud and the ellipse around the outside Then I welded all of those together. I created the arrow shape with the rectangle and the polygon tool. Then I took that and cut it out. And then we created a Bezier tool object here in the background. Going through creating all the different objects, we were able to create a perfect trace of that also. And you can practice with that. Now here at the bottom, I have an arc set up with a blend of star objects following the path of the arc. And we'll get into the blend tool in a later session. 
So we'll wrap here concerning the ellipse tool and how to work with that in CorelDRAW. And we'll continue in our next video session.